All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. Uh, for sure, not many people knows that we are live on air, but soon they will come. Uh, you know, the Muslims always they try to come to us and they argue about the Trinity. And one of the funny things about Islam that Muslims they try to argue about the Trinity and thinking that if they say that we believe in one God, that will make them have a good statement or have a, have a good stand. You see, the question is. If your God is one or ten, if they are true or not, who cares if they are one or seven or eleven? A God who says that a sperm coming from the backbone cannot be God. A God who says sperm, women have a sperm coming from the ribs cannot be God. A God who cannot remember which one he created first, the earth or the stars, he cannot be God. A God who do not remember anything he says cannot be God. So you try your best to speak about one God, one God, one God, but yet your God is a fiction and he is not exist. And the first question the Muslim will ask you, did Abraham believe in the Trinity? <clears throat> you see, first, first of all, there's nothing is called believe in the Trinity. There is something we have. It's called believe in God. Trinity is how God he present himself to us So we as a Christian we believe in one God and The foolish of Islam or the foolishness of Muslims who try to debate us. They try to make us as if we believe in three gods Which is absolutely hocus and stupid and not a single Christian believe in that So they are debating you about something you don't even believe in When a Muslim he says to you, "Did Abraham believe in the Trinity?" Then the Muslim should ask us, "When God he came to Abraham in the Old Testament as a man, who was that God?" They don't know. When the Book of Genesis says that God is a spirit, God in the beginning, the first verse in Genesis. The first thing what God he said, you know, that he created light. He said, let be light, and light was. And he formed the earth, and the earth without any form, without which means which is not like uh, designed, and the spirit of God was above it. The spirit of God. So the first two words in the Bible we have God and we have a spirit. And then we see God coming to Abraham as a man. So here we go. We have God the Father, God the Spirit, and God the man. This is in the Old Testament. This is not in the New Testament. And then we see that Jesus said in the New Testament that Abraham, he saw my day. And the Jews, they said to him, the same as the Muslims today, how, how you saw, how Abraham saw your day, but you are not even 50 years old. He said, the truth I say to you, that he saw my day. The truly, truly I say to you, he confirmed that. Before Abraham, I am. And yet the Muslim they say to us, where is the Trinity and where Jesus says I am God? He just he just confirmed that he is the God of Abraham. But as usual, I don't refute Muslims from my Bible because you are speaking to, to people who don't want to listen. So let us get them busted from their books. If you look with me in this uh, art picture, you will see uh, Abraham and he have two sons. But in the Quran, the Quran confirmed that Abraham, he have three sons. Let us go to the Quran. And the first question I want to ask. You focus too much on Abraham. Trying to say that Abraham... He never heard that God is a spirit and God in in heaven we call him the father and God as a man which is false but here we go if we go here we will see that the Quran is speak about children of Abraham and the children Oh, the children of Abraham are mentioned in different verses as usual the Quran is all over place like you know you cannot read about Abraham in one place in the Quran the Quran is like a book of uh, 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 as I said just a few hours ago uh, uh, it's messed up disorganized 
where we can find the story of Abraham it's there's no story of Abraham it is it's all over so you will see here that there is a person his name is Ishmael and there is a person his name is Isaac and then in different verse there's a person his name is Jacob as we see in chapter 2 verse number 132 and this was the legacy that Abraham left to his sons and so did Jacob oh my sons Allah has chosen the faith for you okay what is the faith is Islam now you see if we ask the Muslims where is the book of the one you call him a prophet his name is Isaiah where is the book of Isaiah where is Isaiah teaching? Where is Jacob teaching? Where is the prophet? Uh, his name is Elijah. Where is the prophet who his name is uh, Job? Where is the prophet? All, all the prophets. How come Islam does not mention even their names? Why their names is missed and it's not located or cannot be located? So here we see. The Quran confirms something very important. When the Muslim they speak to us about Abraham they have a very little information about this man who they called him Abraham in the top of that the Quran even could not quote the name of the father of Abraham correctly As we see in this verse in the front of us the Muslim believe that Abraham he have a father his name is Azar this is why it's not translated this is why it's not translated so when a Muslim he want to speak about Abraham he need to tell me how come the God of Islam he do not know a very simple information about Abraham since when Abraham, his father, his name is Azar. In fact, the verse here, Muhammad is a thief who stole something written about Abraham in the Aramaic, where the man he said to Abraham, or let us say Abraham, he said to his father, supposedly, Azar, which means foolish, which means what you are doing is foolish. Are you going to worship idols? But because Muhammad is a thief, and you do not know what Azar mean, he thought that Azar is the name of the father of Abraham. The same as he thought that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. The same as he thought that Amran is the father of Aaron and the father of Moses and the father of Mary. Why he thought that? Because in the Old Testament it says that there is a three children of uh, uh uh, three, uh, three children's uh, Moses and Aaron and Maryam those are brothers and sisters so Muhammad he said to himself okay Maryam is the mother of Jesus Maryam is the sister of Aaron and the sister of Moses so you owe sister of Moses or sister of Aaron but here you notice with me <laughs> The Muslims not only do not know anything about Abraham, they do not even know what the name of Abraham means. If you ask a Muslim who keep repeating Abraham, 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 okay, what Abraham mean? They don't know. Was his name really Abraham? Is it his real name? Or this is a name was given to him. The same as you ask them, who is Israel? If you go right now and click and like search in the Quran, you will find that the name Israel mentioned many times, more than 40 times. Okay, who is Israel? 
I don't know. The only way to know is to read the Bible, which is very funny. <laughs> Remember, the Bible is not preserved, and the Muslims, they cannot depend on the Bible in anything, because supposedly, according to them, this book is corrupt. So how me as a Muslim, if I am a Muslim, God forbid, how I am going to know who is Israel? The Quran keeps saying, oh, children of Israel, oh, children of Israel, oh, children. Okay, who is Israel? You do not know. When somebody speak about a prophet and he claimed that he is too much in love with that prophet or let us say he is the father of the prophet because even they claim that Muhammad himself is Abrahamic which is proven to be false because we can prove that from the Quran the Quran confirmed that Muhammad he do not know what God and he never heard of the true God he was a pagan man 100% and actually he's still a pagan man after he claimed to be a prophet and we can prove that easy if we go in the Quran we will find the following in chapter 42 <coughs> verse number 52 Excuse me if I'm coughing. I hope it's not bothering you from, from your side. And thus have we, by our command, sent inspiration to thee, though knowest not before what was revelation and what was faith. Muhammad never was Abrahamic. He never knew the God of Abraham, and he have nothing to do with the God of Abraham and the proof in the front of your eyes. It's a big fat lie. The Muslim keep repeating that Muhammad was Abrahamic. A person who knows the faith of Abraham, he will not be said to him in the Quran that you know not what faith is, what is revelation. He have no faith. He have no revelation. What does that mean? He have no connection with the true faith, and he have no connection with the true revelation. So how he can be Abrahamic? Then we try to understand who is Abraham in Islam after all this presentation, just to show you that Islam is really a mixed up religion. Muhammad trying to hijack some names to use them for his agenda to make you believe that he is coming from the same belief. But yet, and not only that, Muhammad, to make it more funny, Muhammad and the Muslims, they claim that the one who built the Kaaba, or let us say restore the Kaaba was Abraham which is against all history books and all what books written about Abraham. Not a single person in the world come to us with such a story that Abraham, he went all the way to Mecca, which does not make sense anyway. Because at the end of the day, Abraham is a person who, you know, he he, he is uh, like everybody at that time. I mean, they, they live by what? They don't have uh, companies. They don't have uh, uh, Microsoft. They don't have Lockheed. They don't have... Life is simple, and people either they grow, uh, you know, uh, vegetation, or they have animals, or both. So there is nowhere, no, no way, somebody is coming from a green land is going to immigrate to the middle of nowhere, where no people cannot even survive. So here we need to ask ourselves: the story about Abraham, the one who went to build the Kaaba, and he took with him his son Ishmael. And the funny here we find that Abraham he took Ishmael, but there is no mention of his wife Sarah, and there is no mention of his son Isaac, supposedly. So what happened to Isaac? Where is Isaac disappear in the story? If we go in the Quran, you will find the following. All right. In 
in chapter 2 verse number 124 and remember that Abraham was tried by his Lord with certain commands which he fulfilled he said I will make thee an imam, <laughs> imam to the nation he bleeded and also imams from the offspring he answered but my promise is not within the reach of evil doers <clears throat> Mm. From the children of Abraham, there is will be leaders of nations, and leaders here are religious leaders. But look what the Quran said. You see, Muhammad, when he speak, he always do make a huge mistakes. In chapter six, verse number eighty-four, it says. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob. But notice with me here that the Quran does not mention Ishmael in this verse. Did you notice that? The Muslims put between two bracket the word three because they are corrupt. You know, it's a corrupt religion because why you add a three if it's not there? Even in Arabic it says, confirming that this is for two. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كِلَا هَدَيْنَا Both. You see the word here? This is both. So why here they put the word, all three are guided? This is why I say, you cannot learn Islam from Muslims, because they lie. If we change the translation here, and I will tell you why they add the word three, because this is a disaster. Because the Quran here confirm that only from the, the children of Isaac and Jacob will be prophethood. If we change the translator, <clears throat> hmm? we change the translator, hold on. Uh, we take which one? All of them are the same garbage, but just to get them busted. <clears throat> uh, it was Joseph Ali, I think. We need to change it to something else. All right. Let us see Bictal. If Bictal will lie less or more. Look, Bictal here, he said each of them was guided. There's no three, which is still a lie. It doesn't say each of them, it says both. Let us go and see different translation. Maybe we can find one of them is being honest. Sometimes this mission is impossible. Let us see Shakir. Each was guided. Oof. Each was guided. I think they are copying from each other. Let us see. Al Maududi. This is a new guy. Hmm. Uh, you see here they are saying each. Look like they are stuck with each. However, it's make it clear. Let us not to go like because it says they are kila, which means both. Both, both, not each, both. Isaac and Jacob. We guided and we made from their offspring the prophethood. The Quran refused to name Ishmael in this verse. Why? Because in this verse mention the names of a prophet. If you look with me here, is the list of a prophets on all of them they are from the nation of Israel, the children of Abraham, all the way to the children of Israel. Not a single one of them is not 
a prophet for the Jews. Muhammad in this point, he was being hypocrite to the Jews and he avoided to speak about Ishmael because he knew that the Jews don't believe and don't accept that Ishmael was a prophet. Because of that, Muhammad, he dropped his name. Otherwise, why the name of Ishmael is not there? Remember, Ishmael is the elder in the family. As even Muhammad speak of. So why Muhammad he jumped the name of Ishmael in this story here? And then if we continue, we will find more, more stuff, which is weird, proving to us Muhammad to be a false prophet. Uh, <clears throat> Let's go here. And here, the, the Trinity I'm going to speak about, starting with the children of Abraham. Can a Muslim tell us why Abraham, he have three kids? I mean, there is a connection with the story. Why in Islam everything is three? You see, are you just because you are copying from the Jews or it happened to be this way or it happened, there's, there is no reason for it. It just happened that there are three. We will see that. In chapter 19, verse number 49, it says the following. When he had turned away from them, from those whom they worship beside Allah, we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob, and each one of them we made a prophet. What is Ishmael? Few verses after, you will see that Ishmael became a prophet. And also mention in the book, the story of Ishmael. He was truly true to what promised, and he was one of the messengers. Actually, here it doesn't say uh, what they put between the two brackets here, strictly, etc. No problem, but it's not there. So now we have three prophets. They are children of one man. His name is Abraham. For sure, this is not what Christianity agree upon, and neither the Jews. But here the question is, if Allah is God who is against the Trinity, how come he choose from one man, three prophets, three sons in the same time? For who? Why we need the three prophets in the same time? So right away, we will notice that the story focusing in three names. First, it was one man, and then we have three names. We have Ishmael, we have Isaac, and we have Jacob. Then we find that Abraham, he worshipped three stars. And by the way, uh, we missed this one. We don't want to miss this uh, chapter uh, 29, verse number 27, where Muhammad, he did poo-poo because he make it clear that yes the quran says that ishmael is a is a prophet isaac is a prophet jacob is a prophet which means three prophets but the quran confirm only from the children of isaac and jacob the prophethood And actually, that will be specifically Jacob. No prophethood will come from any other person, according to the Quran, only from Jacob. So Abraham was a prophet, Isaac was a prophet, Jacob was a prophet, but the children's will be the children of Jacob and they are going to be prophets 
Then after that, there's disconnection in the story. Suddenly, Jacob, his name became Israel, and nobody knows why. And the Muslim, they have no idea who is Israel unless they go and read in the old, you know, in the Old Testament to find out who is Jacob and how Jacob became Israel. If you ask the Muslim what Jacob means, they do not know. If you ask them what Isaac means, they do not know. If you ask them what Abraham means, they do not know. If you ask them what Israel means, they do not know because their prophet do not know. For he is a false prophet. If we go in the Quran to see more verses, you will notice with me the following. The Trinity of Abraham, surprising, was worshipping stars, not worshipping God. This is the story of Abraham, chapter 6. It says, So also we did show Abraham the power and the laws of the heaven and the earth, that he might, you know, understand. And look what happened to Abraham. Abraham looking for the Trinity. The Islamic Trinity. When the night covered him over, he saw the star. He said, this is my Lord. And you notice here, the Lord is written with the word L, capital letter, because this is exactly what he meant. He said, Hada Rabbi. Rabbi in Arabic means my God. Specifically, my God, not just my Lord. But when it said, he said, I love not those who said. Which is a very stupid argument because you worship the star because the star was there. You refuse to worship the star when the star, because the star disappeared. Well, Allah never appeared to you. So if the reason to reject something to believe in as God is to appear or not to appear, Allah never appeared to Abraham, never appeared to Muhammad, never appeared to Moses, never appeared to anyone. According to Islam. Not according to the Bible, by the way. Because we know that God came to Abraham as a man. So, this is how silly and stupid the story in the Quran that Abraham he worship a star says this is my God and then when the star disappear he said I'm not going to worship this God because he disappear and the Muslim they say to us well here Abraham he was a liar he was just being a scammer he was scamming those people who they believe in that so he wanted to show them a trick so he said, okay, I believe in your God. So he joined them and he took Shahada. He said, this is my God, Takbir. And then he don't believe really. He was saying that, but he don't believe. This is what the Muslim trying to explain to you. But look how evil this story is. That's mean in, in Islam, they have no problem if Abraham was a scam. He go between a group and he said to them, I believe in your God. But in fact, he don't believe in their God. And he takes Shahada, he converted to the religion, and later he said to them, Ah, I don't like this God because he disappeared. Are we following, guys? Are we following? I hope what I'm saying to you <clears throat> is not too much complicated. How silly is this debate? Imagine I join your religion. You, you are a person who believe in a star. And then I said to you, okay, I'm a Christian prince. I want to take Shahada. I want to convert your religion. This, this star is my God. Hey, I worship you, star. You are my Lord. And then after that, I say to you, you know what? This star is set. I'm not going to believe in it. As if those people, they never notice the star disappear. As if Abraham, he never saw that before. As if this is something Discovery Channel just just it's like uh, Abraham he sent a satellite and he discovered something nobody knows. Well, those people they knew the star does not appear at the time. And by the way, it's a stupid of you to say that I love not those who sit because the star never go anywhere. The star is there. 
you don't see it during the daytime because the sunlight will not make you able to see it. As simple as that. Then the drama continue. Abraham, after that, he saw the moon. So when he saw the moon rising in splendor, he said, this is my God. But when the moon set, he said, <laughs> unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be amongst those who go astray. Hold on, hold on. There is something really stupid here. Didn't the Quran just say that Allah, he showed Abraham the guidance? So either we have to agree that the one who wrote the story is an idiot. He did not write the story in order. This is, should be come later. Which means the story here, this verse here, should come at the end of what happened to Abraham, not in the beginning. But as we see, Allah, he showed Abraham the laws of the heaven and the earth. And then when Abraham, he saw the star, he converted to the star religion. How stupid that is. You just showed him the truth. And then he became a star worshiper. After he became a star worshiper, he became a moon worshiper. And then he left the moon for the same reason he left the star worshiping because he said, I don't like the one who said. As if Abraham, he never noticed that the moon does not stay in the sky always and it's set. And then Abraham, he noticed that there is something that's called the sun. Looked like he never saw it before. So when he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, this is my God. This is Akbar. Here, here, you will notice the Muslim, they hide the, 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 the word is used, which is Akbar. Akbar is not the greatest. I know that one day, uh, one of the Christians, without saying his name, I think you know his name, he said that Allah Akbar means God is great, which is very stupid to say, and I have to school him and make a video about it. Akbar and the sun. You see, in the time of Muhammad and before Muhammad, there is two major gods who they are taking over all the territories in the Middle East and even in Europe. The sun and the moon. Usually, those who live in the desert, they don't like the God, which is the sun, because the sun kill their animals, kill their grass, kill you know, destroy their water, and bring death. The moon is kind, is nice, is uh, is uh, is beautiful. It is uh, you know, they, they live in the desert. As simple as that. The the moon never bring harm. So usually, those who live in Arabia, they worship the moon. And there are some people who worship the sun. If you remember today, we mentioned that Allah, he have three daughters. But nobody asked himself, why Allah, he have three daughters for the Arab before Islam? How he have daughters? Who, the, the, the daughters, they gave birth from where? How? Who? You know what I mean? When, when, when somebody... He says to us that the, the, the Muslims, even the Quran confirmed that. You see, we are not making things up. That will show you the verses. The Quran confirmed that the Arab worship Allah, but the Allah they have is an Allah who have three daughters. Okay, where is those daughters are coming from? Who is their mother? Anyone knows? Who is the mother? of the daughters of Allah. Who knows?
Nobody? Come on, one of you must be, no? Who is the mother of the daughters of Allah? The son. The son. They believed that the God of the moon married from the God of the sun and they have three daughters. As simple as that. And this is confirmed in the Quran. Alat, al Uzza, and Manat. You see here, we explained in the video before this one, that here you see it says seen lat and uzza. This is a false stupid translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. Alat and al uzza. And we explained to you. Let us change the translator. I mean, we have to jump between translators because you know, liars, what we can say. Look, this guy here, he wrote it to us as it is. Do you see the word L? Do you see L? Like one of you previously, he said to me, what is the proof that the word A-L mean God? It's in front of you. Uzzah is goddess. Lat is a goddess. And you notice here how L-Lat is separated, correct? It's not one word. Al Uzza Al Lat Al Lah Allah. I think now it's clear, right? So Al is a word meaning God. So God Lat, God Al Uzza, and God Manat the third. Hold on. We are striked with the word the Trinity again. The Arabian, they have gods who have sex together and they have three daughters God Al Lat, God Al Uzza, and God Manat. The reason the Muslims they try always not to talk much about Lat Al Uzza, and not only that, by the way, Muhammad believe that the three daughters of Allah are real. They are real. They are not pagan. Let me see if I can grab some reference for you. <coughs> they are real. <coughs> Please invite your friends. Not many people expecting me to be on air because we were for many hours. Uh, let us see. I'm I'm trying to find. A reference for you in English, not in Arabic. All right. I found it actually in English, but I'm trying to find it. Um, in official Islamic website, but I found it already. Um, okay, let's see this one. All right. Look like this one will do the job. <clears throat> You know, I hate to, sh to to speak about something without showing the proofs of what we speak of. But you know, Muslims will say, okay, he's making things up. Khalid ibn al-Walid. This is a Muslim website, abdurrahman.org. I just search in Google, I get it. Don't ask me, this is not my website, this is your Muslim website. 
Khalid ibn, ibn Walid, which is supposed to be one of the cousins of Muhammad. You know, when we say cousin, doesn't mean like cousin, cousin. You know, the, um, it's one tribe. He, he, he uh, the Prophet of Allah, he sent him to go and kill Al Uzza. To kill what? Al Uzza. And they are quoting for us here in English from Tafsir ibn Kathir. So Muhammad and the Muslims claim that Al Uzza, the daughter of Allah, was real. And she was a woman with dark skin. Again, here we go. She is black. When Allah Messenger conquered Mecca, he sent Khaled ibn Walid to the area of Nakhla, where the idol of Al Uzza was uh, 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 erected on three trees. Here we go again, three trees. Khalid he cut out the trees, the three trees, and approached the house, built around it, and destroyed. When he went back, the prophet, to the prophet, he informed him of the story of what he did. Muhammad, he said to him, go back, finish your mission, for you have not finished it. Really? What is that? Khalid, he went back, and when he get closer where he was, where also it is servants of Al Uzza. They saw him. They start invoking by calling Al Uzza. When Khalid in, you know, uh, uh, approached it, he found a naked woman whose hair was untidy and who was throwing sand on her, on her head. Then Khalid al Walid, he killed her with a sword. And he went back to the messenger of Allah who and he said to him that I killed her and this is the story but actually here the story is not in full uh, <clears throat> let us do this I am not satisfied <laughs> oh there's no screen sorry guys I'm I'm really sorry hold on hold on hold on it's my it's my fault you see sometime Oh boy. Hold on, hold on. It's all right. You will lose nothing. We have the time. I'm here with you. We repeat again and again and again. No problem. All right. Okay. We go to chapter 53, verse number 19. I will put the screen soon. Hold. Give me a second. <coughs> Okay. Here the story of Al Uzza, Al Lat and Al Uzza. You will see that the Uzza is exist and you know uh, even Al Uzza they claim that the name Al Uzza is coming from the name of Allah which is Al Aziz. So there was a three trees which the idolaters place uh, uh, like you know their sacrifice or etc. And they have curtain in the area. Of Nakhla, Nakhla in Arabic means the tree, the palm tree. Between Mecca and Al Taif, the Quraysh revered Al Uzza during the Battle of Uhud. Abu Sufyan said, "We have Al Uzza, but you have, you don't have Al Uzza. We have Al Uzza on our side, but you don't have Al Uzza." All right. Then he says, "Manat was another idol." Of the area all right and they are telling you where it was located then he continue here 
speaking about how Muhammad he killed the daughters of Allah if you read here with me they said that when the messenger of Allah conquered Mecca he sent Khalid al Walid to the area of Nakhla where al idol Al-Uzza was erected on the three trees of the of a forest Khalid cut the trees and approached the house built around it and destroyed it. then when he went back to the Prophet he informed him of the story and the Prophet said to him go back you did not finish your mission your finish your mission is not finished yet so Khalid he went back and he found there the servants of Al-Uzza people who serve Al-Uzza and when he approached it, he found a naked woman whose hair was untidy and who was throwing sands on her head. Khalid killed her with his sword and went back to the Messenger of Allah and who he, who he said to and he said to him, That is Al Uzza. <laughs> So look how Muhammad he made a big poopoo. Muhammad he just confirmed that Al Uzza is a truly a goddess which is exist. Do you see it? When Muhammad he said that this is Al Uzza, that means Al Uzza is something true. And Muhammad he claimed that he just killed the daughter of Allah. So how the Arab are pagan, yet Muhammad he believed that Uzza was truly the daughter of Allah and he just killed her. Because either Al Uzza is a false goddess, is not exist, it's a fiction. Because remember, Al Uzza, it's not something uh, Muhammad he was the Muslim worship in the time of Muhammad, they worship him for centuries and centuries and centuries. So are you saying to me that this woman was alive for centuries and centuries and centuries and you are the one who killed her? Do you see guys the stupidity? So Muhammad, he is confirming here that he believed that Al-Uzza is a true goddess. Or what he is saying, I killed her. And here we will notice, by the way, the translation is not true because this is a dark-skinned woman and they, they make her dark because supposedly she is evil. Because in Islam, if you are black, you are evil. This is, this is how disgusting this religion is. It's a religion based on racism. This is why Muhammad, he said in the hadith, if you see any pure black animal, kill him. Any pure black animal, kill him. In different place, Muhammad, he confirmed. Let us see if we can find some reference. Just for the benefit of the Abdul. Because the Abdul always, they lie to us, then they say, Islam is not racist, it's not religion of, uh, you know, <clears throat> This is the book of Kitab al-Shafa bi-ta'arifi huquq al-Mustafa. The book of healing. Shafa here, not healing, reading. It's like, you know, the Quran says that when you kill them, Allah will heal that chest of the believer. It's a kind of hateful healing. To, to recognize the right of Muhammad, and Mustafa is one of the names of Muhammad. Look what it says here. قال أحمد بن أبي سليمان صاحب سحنون من قال أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أسود كلهم
anyone he said that Muhammad is a black kill him he is not the one saying that by the way he is saying this is the order of Islam man qala man qala whoever says that the prophet of Allah is a black shall be killed just for saying the prophet is a black And as you see, Muslims, this is your reference. This is page number 543. And I challenge you to say it's not true. By the way, we can show you the same reference from different books, not necessarily from this one. This is a different book. It's called, actually, this is the same book. Hold on. Let us see. Here we go. Fath al Malik al Ma'bud, Takmir al Manhal al Ma'ad, etc. Blah, 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 فتح الباري في شرح صحيح البخاري. Let us see. Yeah, I don't see the reference here. But anyway, the one we showed you is enough. If we go, if we go right now, and we can go to to the hadith, you know, just to you know confirm, Muhammad he said it clearly, kill every pure black animal. The messenger of Allah says, kill every one of them is all black. Do you see it? Obviously, this man he have a mental issue, and he is obsessed with hatred to the black color. So you should kill any animal who is a pure black. Not only dogs, by the way. That's what Bahim is for all animals. Read with me uh, carefully. You see all those, you know. Here, by the way, it doesn't say black dog. This is a false translation. It says, kill every one of it is black, totally black, jet black. The word dog does not exist. This is between two brackets. Uh, <clears throat> in, different, in different hadith, Muhammad, they ask him, why you want to kill all the black dogs? He said, the black dog is the devil. A person, a Muslim, is asking the narrator, the companion of Allah Messenger, and he said to him, Did you ask the Prophet why we should kill the black dog? What what this what distinguished the black dog from the rest? So he said to him, What feature is in the black dog which distinguish distinguish it from the red dog and yellow dog like why why we should kill it he said oh son of my brother i ask the messenger of allah the same as you ask me which means the same question what distinguish it he said the black dog is a devil <clears throat> so while while hijab is in africa trying to preach to the african about the amazing islam why you don't quote for them that the prophet said anyone is a pure black kill him why you don't show them your prophet saying that the black dog is the devil i am sure the african they will like it and they will enjoy it very much Not only that, Muhammad he claimed that the devil himself is a black. And the devil who will come to destroy the Kaaba
is African. Let's see if we can get it for you. Let us see. You see, sometimes the search engine here is not good. Even I know the hadith word by word, but still, here we go. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Let us see. Here we go. You see the Muslims here. They will not explain to you and they will not give you a correct translation. What is the hadith here? What happened? The hadith is gone. The above hadith is mentioned in the authority of Abu Hayyar. Where is the above hadith? Where is the hadith? There is no hadith. It's gone. The hadith here in Arabic. يُخَرِّبُ الْكَعْبَ ذُو السُّوَيْقَتَيْنِ مِنَ الْحَبَشَةِ The one who will destroy the Kaaba is an Ethiopian man, which means he's a black man, and he is he is making fun of his, his, his shape. He has thin legs, an African who has thin legs, and supposedly this is the devil. Uh, look at this translation here. It would be an Abyssinian having two small shank who would destroy the house of Allah, the exalted, the, the glorious. Who is this guy? He is the devil. The prophet said, literally one of the two legs, lean legs, from Ethiopia will demolish the Kaaba. You see it? Why? Why Muhammad describing the shaitan who will destroy the Kaaba as an Ethiopian person? Why the angel Jibreel is white? Why the black stone was white but sin made it black? Sin made the black stone black, which means you commit sin, you get black. The color of dignity in Islam, holiness in Islam, is to be white. The color of you being evil is being black, and this is what Muhammad is trying to teach us. The black stone was totally white. <clears throat> Let's get the hadith. Here we go. The messenger of Allah said that the black stone descended from paradise and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sin of the children of Adam. And this is a clear evidence that Muhammad believed that the reason that black people are black, it's because they commit an extreme sin. So Allah, he black in them, which is a very clear racism and disgusting teaching. 
actually Muhammad he made it more clear look like we are going out of our topic but it's okay for a second Muhammad he made it clear that Allah created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam let's see if we can get the hadith all right just to finish this topic and go back to the Trinity all the messenger said Allah created Adam when he created him and he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from the white of spring as if it were white ants he struck his left shoulder and there were there emitted from is uh, 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 from it from it as a black of spring as if they were circle then he said to the one who they are from the right shoulder to paradise and i don't mind and then he said to those who they are emitted from the left shoulder to hell and i don't mind do we need more clear evidence that Islam is a very racist religion? And yet the Abdul, they are going to Ghana trying to convert people to Islam. <laughs> In case you do not know, even you cannot go to the heaven of Islam without being a white person. Everyone will enter heaven. If you remember a few days ago, we asked a Muslim, why Allah will make all those who believe white? He said, okay, there's a matter, you know, you are black, Allah will make you white. But this, no, this is not a question. The question, why? Why I cannot enter heaven as a black person? I was, I was a created. I'm a black. I like to be black. Why I need to be changed into white? This is the question. No, you are not allowed to enter heaven as a black. Allah have to change your color and make you white. Now we go back to the Trinity. <clears throat> when Muhammad he confirmed that he killed Al Uzza, he missed something important. What happened to Manat and what happened to Alat? Are they still free? <laughs> Remember when Muhammad he sent this guy. Khalid Murid, and he told him to finish the mission to assassinate Al Uzza. Hmm? After he killed her, that woman, he said that was Al Uzza. It's a woman who have a dark skin, and Muhammad he killed her, and this is the daughter of Allah. Hmm? Now we go back to Abraham's story. So as you see, Abraham he worshipped three gods. The reason we went there to talk about those goddesses because Abraham he worshiped three gods Allah he have three daughters and those three daughters they are nothing but stars and idols in the same time the moon god have sex with the sun god and they have three babies all of them they are females Abraham he worshiped three babies Baby number one was a star. Baby number two was the moon. Baby number three was the sun. As you see in chapter 6, verse number 76, 77, and 78.
So when a Muslim he speak about the oneness of God, and he say to us, "Was Abraham a believer in the Trinity?" Our answer in Islam, Abraham was a believer in the three gods: the moon, the star, and the sun. And the proof is in front of you. Abraham in the Bible, do he believe in the Trinity? Absolutely. For Abraham, he knew that God is a spirit. He knew that God came to him as a man. And he knew that God is our Father in heaven. You see, if you go to the book of Genesis, let's go to Genesis 1. Immediately, you will find God, he presents himself as God and his spirit. And remember, the God of Islam is not spirit. The God of Islam is not spirit. So what is the God of Islam? He is a body, as Muslim describe him. He is a physical being. Who have no spirit. Which make him dead body. Our God, and this is the proof that our God have nothing to do with the God of Islam. And the God of Abraham have nothing to do with the God of the Abdul. If we go to Genesis, we will find the following. <coughs> In the beginning of the creation, this is the beginning, how God created everything. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was in the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So the first verse in the Bible, the most time they keep saying to us, where is the Father, where is the Son, where is the Holy Spirit? The first verse in the Bible speak that there is God and there is a Spirit. Muslims, they are people who they copy paste. If we go to the same book, the same book, the book of Genesis, chapter 18, we will find that God came to Abraham as a man. Let us go there. God, he came to Abraham as a man. And you know, the Muslims, they like, they like certain translation, by the way. <clears throat> they think they can beat us with the translations. Which translation you like me to read it from? <laughs> Which one you like more? <clears throat> hmm? Funny people. God, he appeared to Abraham as a man. And you say to me, what is the God of Abraham and what Abraham believed in? Abraham believed that God is in heaven. God, in the same time, he is a spirit. God, in the same time, came to him as a man. And this is what Jesus said. Before Abraham, I am. Where Jesus, he come with this uh, claim that before Abraham, I am. From this story in front of us. He came to Abraham, as it shows us in Genesis chapter 18, verse number 1. In the book of John, <clears throat> when the Jews, they ask Jesus, they said to, to him, how you say that Abraham, he saw my day? I mean, how, how this happened? What do you mean, Abraham, he saw your day? You are not even 50 years old. How Abraham saw that day? This is impossible. 
in order to say that Abraham is like me saying now to you that between me and Abraham there's a couple of thousand of years but yet Abraham he saw me I was in his time so either you have to say I'm a crazy or you have to say that this person is saying that he is God for he is exist always Listen carefully what Jesus said. John 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, I will move a little bit, so we can go where Jesus speak about himself before Abraham I am. Ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, which of you can convince me of sin? Have you ever heard of a human who didn't have sin? <laughs> Imagine I challenge you, challenge you, that who dare of you to say to me, I am a sinner? <laughs> that would be the joke of the century. For every human being is a sinner, right? Jesus is challenging them, saying, Who of you can convince me of sin? None. And listen carefully. Why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see 